Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia. Welcome back to our Liu Bei Let's Play. This is episode 6. We're continuing uh, from turn 36 in the harvest season of 197. Okay, on last episode, we have pushed our force across the Yellow River after uh, defeating and executing Yuan Shao. Uh, we have taken over the salt mine of Pingyuan and is currently sieging the small city of Pingyuan. We have met two new neighbors to the north, uh, Gong Sun Zan, who had a great past relationship with us uh, previous to the start of the game. So it was easy to sign a non-aggression as well as a military access agreement with him. And then I did the same with Han Fu, who was already in a war with the Yuan Shao faction. Uh, so they were happy to sign a treaty with us as well. Um, currently, the Yuan Shao faction has become Yuan Tan's faction. Following Yuan Shao's death, uh, we captured him and executed him. Uh, the current situation is uh, we are at war uh, with Yuan, Yuan Tan's force. Uh, who is dwindling. I think they're down to one main force in their uh, main city of Henei, and as well as Dongmin and their vassal of Han empires. Uh, we are. We noticed before the end of last episode that Liu Bao has turned um, pretty negative in terms of how they view us. This is mainly because they're allied with the Han empire and we're currently at war with them so they don't like us and we're becoming more and more of a threat as we expand. Uh, that's something you have to pay attention as you uh, gain more territory. A uh, few things before we kick off the gameplay. Uh, one thing is I noticed that our unity has just reached over 250, which should bring us into the next uh, tier. Uh, it should probably show up next turn. We will gain 25 prestige points one additional administrator position and 10% uh, from all sources to income. Uh, the 25 prestige point should also level us up to second marquees, which will unlock farther assignments uh, and administrator spot, uh, more army, trade agreement, uh, spy, as well as um, a few more court positions. Uh, we'll cover this when it happens. Uh, our plan for this episode is continue our conquest of Yuan Tan's land. Uh, we'll definitely be taking Pingyuan. Uh, it's a lucrative industry city with its salt mine. As for Henei, uh, the army is currently parked in a farmland and the Henei's capital is a large city. I am not sure if I want to finish off Yuan Tan right now. After taking Pingyuan, I might uh, see if I can extort him for peace. Uh, I know I will never have everlasting peace with uh, his forces just because I, I, I executed his dad so that's that uh, but I feel like this war the amount of benefit it will bring us by continuing to conquer uh, will dwindle because we'll be facing with more and more factions and I don't think we can remain friendly with everyone and we'll be stretched too thin uh, we'll be happy to take over Pingyuan and build the city up so that's our plan going forward uh, let's get started. Um, I think we just started the siege. Yes, so we just started the siege. We'll continue the siege. Oh, oh, before we get started, there's one more thing of note. Uh, I was checking out during the court uh, view uh, under the faction. If you go to characters and you, if you sort by faction, you can see all the characters you have met. Uh, under these characters, a uh, few things to note, uh, Lady Liu, who doesn't like us, is not, the faction is not um, uh, Yuan Shao. Right? She developed a rivalry with us, right? We killed one of her kin, um, but she is on a different faction. She is, I think this is Liu Biao's faction. So I don't know which one of her kin did I, did I murder. Um, yeah, she, so she's Liu Bao's, she's not Liu Bao's wife, Liu Bao's wife is Cai Fu Ren, uh, Lady Cai. So perhaps she was Yuan Shao's, uh, yes, he was Yuan Shao's wife, and then he left the faction, I guess. Okay, so this might make more sense now. So I think 
Yuan Shao died, right? We executed him. She's Yuan Shao's wife. And Yuan Xi, who also developed a rivalry with us right away, but Yuan Xi didn't win the uh, the faction. He didn't become heir. Yuan Tan became heir, and she left. So maybe she supported Yuan Xi, and she didn't uh, approve of that decision of making Yuan Tan the heir, so the new faction leader. So she left the faction, and I guess Liu Bao took her. So that could make sense. So I guess this is still from us killing Yuan Shao. Uh, what did I want to bring attention to is the fact we were wondering if uh, Mi uh, Zhu was related in any way to Mi Heng, but it turns out it's Mi Heng is a different word, a different character right here. That's the Mi character, then uh, Mi Zhu, because Mi Zhu's brother, uh, who also served under Liu Bei, is Mi Feng, uh, so it's a different character, not related. And it's also uh, interesting to note that Xu Yu, despite being a rather famous character in the book, is just a generic character in the game. He doesn't get any additional stat boost. But he's also very happy that we didn't kill him and employed him instead. Another thing to note is that Liu Dai, although his faction got destroyed, he has now uh, joined the Han, uh, the Han Empire. Uh, he has dis got destroyed by Liu Biao. Um, Lu Zhi, uh, this is an issue I have with the game. So this is another famous character. He is the, uh, I guess he was a master, like a teacher that uh, both Liu Bei and Gong Sun Zan studied under. And he lives uh, in the area that's close to where Gong Sun, Zan, uh, Gong Sun Zan is. And he's loyal to the Han. All this makes sense. And that's why Gong Sun Zan, he has a fondness to Gong Sun Zan. All this makes sense. But how could he, he be only 33? This guy should be ancient, right? Liu Bei is 36, and Gong Sun Zai is 45. But our their teacher, Lu Zhi, is 33 in the game? I don't know, I question this choice right here. And he doesn't have a relationship to uh, Gong Sun Zai and Liu Bei as well. So, but that's just some small things, trivial things. Um, Let's continue. Uh, we're sieging the cities I want to build stuff in are building stuff. Uh, we have the option of upgrading the mine, but I'll wait till we take the city and uh, take a look at what's everything there and then decide. Right now, it's also not entirely uh, supporting our faction yet. It'll take another three more turns, so we're getting reduced uh, income as well. So let's go next turn. Oh, Yuan Tan has a second force. Okay, so Kong Rong wants to buy our feather fan for a thousand gold. Um, you don't have to sell it to him. There is no uh, bonus to his attitude toward us, but we can definitely negotiate a deal. Um, he's a rich man, and we're happy to sell him some of our items. So in the game, uh, all uh, common items, the one without any uh, circles around them, are worth 2.0 in uh, trade negotiations. It's flat. Um, if it's a bronze item, it's worth 4.3. And silver items, I believe, it's worth around 10. Um, I will look that up. Uh, matter of fact, do I have any that's not yet? Okay, I have an armor that's not equipped. Let's check it out. And let's just do this to. Okay, so it's 4.3, 6.7. Not that high. Uh, interesting. Okay, so he wants our feather fan. Uh, we don't really need the item. It's not part of any set. We're happy to make a sell here. Okay. That's a little high. That's still a little high. Oh. That's still a little high. Okay. 151 so we are making 500 more gold and per turn gold are good uh, and bad depending on the situation it's bad if you think the AI will uh, be less honorable and cancel your deal so they'll get the item and don't pay you the full 10 turns but it's good in that if you think the AI values um, relationship that they won't uh, cancel any deal with you and for 10 turns 
you guys will have peace. This also applies when you are um, doing the opposite to the AI, is that if you're trying to buy something, uh, it might be cheaper to buy it with uh, straight cash. But if you do per turn and you don't care about your uh, trustworthiness, uh, you can definitely cancel the deal and get it for a lot cheaper. Alright, Ma Teng has declared war on Domin and as well as uh, the High Empire. Disease. Uh, okay. I think this applies to our siege force over here. We have got a new uh, celery item, an uh, overseer. Oh, plus 5% to campaign movement range. I like that one. This is our commander. He's currently getting just extra instinct and fatigue resistant. If we switch him over to this, we gain 5% more campaign movement as well as 5% move speed. Mm. Yeah, this could work. It's a little bit of a, you lose a little stat, but um, maybe we can give this to Zhang Fei. Now Zhang Fei is on his own. So don't close the screen. If you close the screen, this character will go on a one turn cooldown because you uh, removed him this turn. Just right click on Zhang Fei and you can still use him. Yeah, Zhang Fei is currently only using a, a plus two instinct character, so we'll definitely do this. Um, this this is part of a set. Wait, what set is it part of? Oh no, it's not. That it's oh, it's part of two sets. It enables lose and it's part of two sets. So we'll definitely keep him around. Uh, if there's anyone right now who doesn't have a follower, ah, Jian Yong doesn't have a follower. Okay, we'll give it to Jian Yong then. Just he can safe keep it for us. You know, we can always remove from people. Uh, just because they're not equip uh, equipable right now doesn't mean we can't equip them when we need them. Uh, that's done. Buildings, uh, Beihai has built. Oh yes, we're converting buildings in Beihai. That's right. We converted one. We're gonna convert the second one. This should, this should boost us uh, our food production to three, which will let us take Pingyuan without suffering the uh, a food crisis. Koron has moved his capital to the city of Donglai. Okay, Donglai is right over here. There's two uh, counties that makes up the Donglai commandery. So Koron has started to expand uh, to the corner of the peninsula. That is perfectly fine. Previously, his capital was in the lumber yard in uh, Langya. This is good for us because if we don't want to fight him, we can pay him uh, for his territory and we can pay him for uh, the lumber year now, I can pay him for the fish port because they're not his capital anymore. Uh, previously we couldn't uh, get this traded because it was his capital. Um, so that's all good. Uh, we saw our army during the, uh, the end turn phase moving across. Um, this is Liu Yu. Oh, Liu. Oh, okay. So Liu Yu used to be a uh, Lord over here, I guess he lost and joined Yuan Shu as well. Chu Zhang, um, Jiang Gong, okay. This is a secondary force. This is not the force we've been staring at. This is a different force. So the force of uh, the Yuan kids, uh, Yuan Shao's kids, are coming towards this. We, we can uh, just fight it because we have tribuches. We don't have to wait for this. I'm debating if I want to take this fight with a uh, night battle against their force and just take the city. Or do I want to wait till uh, their reinforcement come and force a uh, fight in the open plain? I think I'm going to just take the fight and uh, use the tribuche to uh, knock a hole in the wall for us to attack. Although. That would be damaging. Yeah, 
Yeah, but we can do it. We'll take some damage from the arrow, but... It'll be quicker too. Let's do it. Alright, so this is the city of Pingyuan. Uh, I want to see if my one turn of tunneling results in any wall damage anywhere. Uh, there is a fire that got started here, uh, which will lead to a continued burn around. Probably burn the barricades down, but probably nothing much. I don't see any wall percent damage anyway on this side. Just a quick... Oh! Okay, it did do something. We did take out a 4 tower on this side. So that is good news, as well as the tower. Two towers. Okay, so we found our uh, area to attack. There's also a fire here. So I guess even tunneling for one turn, if you have trebuchets, you would do damage to the city. That's perfect. So our goal for these battles, uh, these sieges, is to just shatter their morale. Once we shatter their morale, we win the fight. And since they don't have a general inside uh, to help with uh, unit morale, what we want to do is actually spread them out a bit. All right, we did this in our earlier fights when we were against uh, Huang Shao and the Yellow uh, Turban. Rebellion, so we're gonna have our general as our main assault force on this side. We'll create these individual um, threats. Oh, that one's also burning. Perfect. Okay, so we'll put like a unit here to entice the enemy to defend this area. Um, and if they want to come out, this unit can fight uh, you know, sufficiently by themselves. We just want to kind of spread the enemy uh, thinner so that once we route the main force guarding the, the area we're actually assaulting on, the rest would just uh, lose enough morale to just shatter on themselves. That way we win the fight without having to go hunt them down. Okay, so this is perfect. We have spread out to two other corners. We're going to shift the rest of our forces, the two spear guards who are better against uh, archers, uh, saber cow. Guan Yu and uh, our other archers all right here. And that's all. We're going to be taking this slow, mainly using our uh, trebuchets uh, to start. Let's see where they are. Take off auto fire just to take a look. Okay, so right now they spread out quite a bit of force over there and quite a bit of force over there. We need to break a hole in the wall. That's the key for now. Uh, we'll also let the four towers burn out a little bit, although I don't know if the rain will actually... No, the rain doesn't actually put out the fire, which is interesting. 77%, uh, so if I fire here one time, I should be able to knock a hole in that wall. Oh, that's good. Good hit. One ammo used. Perfect. I believe the AI will start shifting forces towards that wall because they don't, uh, they react to gaps like this. And the archer units are not anywhere near us. So we're gonna move our archers this way. Uh, it's not within any uh, tower range so that they can shoot at the troops who are uh, coming to defend the gap. We want. We actually don't even need everyone. Uh, we want the uh, strategist archers to get the most experience. So the gap is not that big, so we'll just spread them out like this. Guan Yu's archers can chill a little bit behind. Uh, spear guards can also move up in case they charge out to meet us. And uh, we'll have the trebuchets fire a shot at this wall after they're here, uh, in case there's any splash damage despite us not aiming at them, uh, to open the gap a little bigger, so the arrows have a, the archers have a better uh, place to shoot at these guys. Okay, perfect. Uh, there, well, uh, uh, Guan Yu's archer is still in range. Let's not fire. Let them, let them line up. Let them line up. 
Just stand behind. If they come out, they can chase up. Alright, once we kill this unit, I'll well, see the tribuchets. I don't know if it's the arrows or tribuchets. Probably tribuchets. No, zero kills. So I guess not. So I guess it is the arrows. Uh, Guan Yu's archers. Two kills, zero kills. It might actually be the wall falling down killing them. Yeah, might have might have crushed them. Okay, that burned out. One more spear guard is coming to uh, reinforce this gap. Uh, before we shoot at these shield guys, let's try using tribuchets. See how effective the. Okay, not very effective. We can stop. We killed one person. We'll use archers. So for flame shots uh, versus regular shots, flame shots have minus four morale. That's the big difference. But you also have range attack rate of six, whereas the standard shots range attack rate of fifteen. This means it's slower to shoot the fire arrows. So uh, in case like this where they're not charging at us, uh, we can definitely just shoot fire arrows. It has thirty-three uh, range damage plus three uh, armor piercing damage. Versus this combination, uh, it's better armor piercing here. Uh, these guys have quite a bit of armor. Okay, so we're gonna just keep the standard arrow and let them fire. Yeah, AI is dumb. I mean, you guys have shields, except for this guy. So in night battles, they have guys who hold lanterns. So, you know, this unit needs three lantern men. So, uh, oh, that lantern man died. I mean, I would think the lantern guys die first. At least these guys have shields. Yeah, you gotta waste a lot of arrow to kill shield guards. Alright, one of them can go fire arrow to give them the morale effect because they are at zero morale. Perhaps a fire arrow, yep, it will shatter them. Now we can stop shooting. Another unit is coming to, uh, yep, to reinforce this gap. Go back to regular arrow until the morale is close to zero, close to four actually, you know, it does four damage. Alright. Now we shoot at this group. Yeah, they they rallied back, but you know, with only eight morale, they're gonna shatter soon too. Uh, again, so you see, you have these troops that that's job is just to hold a lantern for the night battle. No, no shield, no weapons, just to you know tell my archers where to shoot. They have this little rock that's kind of helping them block a little bit of the arrows. And these guys are so safe. Uh, their morale is a 7. I guess we can turn on a fire arrow. Uh, back at 0. And then once the fire arrow hits, the negative 4 comes. And uh, we can stop firing again. I should actually put a control group to easier where's their captain unit is that their captain unit shouldn't the captain unit have a mark on them ah, right there they're guarding the inside okay it doesn't matter we'll let them finish up with this group right here We'll let these guys use up all their arrows to kill off these two uh, spear guards. Then we'll send our um, spear guards in. Okay, that's completely shattered. Won't rally back again. Ooh, from the sky. Oh, the shields are ready, man. They know what's going on.
Alright, one unit has lost all the ammo. Everyone's about to be done. Let's make the last couple ammo worth it. Arc it! There you go. I just want you to shatter. Wave the white flag, shatter. Wow, they are stubborn. They're just not shattering. Okay, they shattered. Uh, switch to these guys. These units can pull back. One of these archers uh, can come over here. Yeah, archers are only as useful as their ammo. We'll wait, wait for those archers to come and do uh, standard arrow damage, and then they can throw in the last morale bit. So these are sword saber cavalry. I believe they have a little shield. Yep. So they have actually pretty decent range block chance. Uh, what we're gonna do while we wait is have these guys shoot at the turrets over here because uh, eventually we have to go in yeah not very accurate trebuchets against arrow towers fire arrows are actually the best thing to, to use against uh Oh wow, I lied. What an accurate shot. Let's take out this, take out those two. Yeah, they're holding on really well. Can join in. Starting to waver. Oh, they have one shot left in them? Okay. Alright, we cleared both of those. Time to clear this one. Just had to walk through the other unit. These guys are tough cookies. Alright, everyone's finished with their shots on this side. The slow moving trebuchet is trying to get into range. Push! Push! Actually crush the encampments. Well, that's good. That's cute. Yeah, so you have like two people, four people, no, two people pushing. One person just walking, and then these guys just walking behind. Alright, so AI just would not leave the place, right? You you stand like right in front of them, and they still don't leave the place. But once you step in, I think they fight you. Alright, we're gonna go in and then stop get braced if the cavalry charges wow they still not charging okay we charge them <laughs> don't give chase Ooh. They ran, but I'm not giving chase. They will just come here and 
choke up the street because those guys are going to rally back. Uh, come, come in. Trebuchet's his ammo's out. And we still has not killed this yet. There's one more ammo, two more shots from this guy. Alright, show us. Show us the money. Oh, good shot. Alright, we got one shot left. It's definitely not going to kill this uh, building. Uh, where do we want to shoot it? Just for fun. Maybe here. Let's see if he's accurate enough to hit hit the wall here. Oh, he hit it. This guy is good. Alright. Now it's the cavalry unit's time to try. Let's call this unit 3. There is no arrow damage until this point. We're gonna get lined up here, activate Liu Bei's ability, charge in, finish off this last unit. Actually, it's a uh, G infantry. Okay, so maybe I'll have the generals do it because the cavalry units are not good against uh, the G infantry. Going a little bit. Right. We capture the thing here. Activate. Let's go. We get 30 seconds to capture that point. I don't even want to fight them. Seven seconds. I right, captured. They will start shooting at them. Now we just come over here. They're starting to pull back. Okay, I don't want them to start shooting at these guys. Uh, these guys can come up here too. There's a barricade here, so I can't just cross charge out. But there's no barricade here. So we'll give the cavalry something to do. Right, yeah. So charge through this route. And we'll have our generals. Ooh, the turret's in range. That's tricky. We can wait 60 seconds, I guess. Alright. Charge! Cavalry, devastating infantry! That charge didn't do much. Most of their guy got past this corner. But, yeah, they have no morale to fight this. Uh, we're safe to chase a little bit. Yeah, these towers don't, don't shoot backwards. So... We'll chase, hopefully, make them uh, actual shatter before they leave. We don't want to chase out. Okay, we're good. Perfect. Good job. Uh, if you notice, they're, they already... Uh, oh, that's the cavalry unit. Where's the other archers? 19. Okay, 19 morale. 14 seconds. Almost there, almost there. So we have 30 seconds, we might as well go capture it. That's the goal. Alright, come, come, come. These guys are probably not gonna move. They're happy just to guard their little square. Which is within the tower range, so once I capture it, I don't even have to fight them. Arrow proof. Alright, now the turrets are my should be shooting at them. Let's see if they just shoot them. No? So I control the arrow towers, but they have no range. They don't shoot at anyone? Okay. 
Uh, they're braced. Braced. Are they gonna move? I'm right in front of you. Yeah, okay, you move. Now we can charge. Oh, wow. Uh, we can also take the capture point and then win us the fight. But Guan Yu will have a little bit of fun. Wow. Come on, do something. There you go. I'll right, we'll just capture the point, end the game. Yeah, it was a little slow. We took it really easy, really careful. Didn't uh, risk anything. But, you know, that's how you want to play. Zero casualty. Oh, they're trying to capture the tower to shoot at us again. We can come inside. Okay. Out of that range. Don't I win? Under the victory countdown if it reaches zero. Where's the countdown? I don't see a countdown. But basically you gotta wait till they're out of the turret range. Where is the victory countdown? Well, they're smart. Well, smart until 8 seconds. I guess we still wait till they all routed. I don't know what's the point of this capture point. Alright, that's a good win. Alright. Oh, we lost the men. We lost, uh, uh, we lost the spear guard when we charged their cavalry. Okay, we lost the men. Oh. 751 to 1, I guess. Alright, we have taken complete control of uh, Pingyuan. Uh, yeah, that's the army we were staring at, Yuan Xi's army. Yuan Xi, Yuan Shang, and uh, Zhao Du. Zhao Du? Zhao Du? I don't know. It's one of those words. Uh, let's see, who leveled up? Uh, okay. Mi Zhu leveled up. Means we can get flame shot, flaming shot on the trebuchets. This is awesome. Alright, we're gonna be attacked soon. He is in a... Um, encampment. Interesting. Alright, let's fix those walls we broke. Uh, this is a uh, industry income. Fix that for 200, I believe. That'd be nice. Uh, this is a level 1 horse exchange. Good building. This is 15%. Uh, Even if we fix it, it's the upkeep, shopkeep. This is not the one I like to have as my third building. So I'm actually going to demolish this, get some money back instead of fix it. Um, it's not a bad building. Eventually we'll build it. But at this point, it's level 1 too, so we're just going to demolish it. So this opens up a slot for us to use next turn. Probably going to use uh, the Shuhan tax collection, just pure income for now. Uh, we will hold off on this. We used up our movement points. And I think everyone will be full healed in a turn. Uh, except for Miju. Miju came into the battle injured. Yeah, everyone will be fine. And we can definitely fight this army, which is really a militia army. Yeah, really, really weak army. This one, a little bit stronger, but still very weak. Okay, Taishan's uh, rebellion situation, it's gonna be slow. And it, so public disorder right now, no no bad effect from negative 13. Uh, we're a negative one food. 
Okay, our, our glorious food plan might not work. Actually, we'll see next turn. Yeah, this global food, uh, uh, if you're negative, you lose reserves. And since our cities are all very uh, small cities at this point, our reserves are all very low. We really can't afford to keep losing reserves. Um, yeah, I mean, if it comes to down to that, I'll just spend the gold and upgrade the jetty. If the if the food doesn't turn uh, to zero next turn. Okay, that was a happy fight. Let's see what Yuan uh, Yuan Xi does. Yeah, Yuan Xi retreats. Okay, they're switching armies. That one's in ambush mode. We can't see them anymore. We're not going to venture out uh, to see that. It's likely that uh, they have three army groups because we don't see Yuan Tan. Oh, Liu Biao has formed a coalition with Cao Cao. Oh, that is not good. This is a coalition forming right to our western uh, front. Uh, Zhang Yan signed a peace treaty with. Uh, uh, Han Fu. Okay, that's fine. Alright, Huang Zhu uh, has uh, urged their master Liu Biao to go to war with uh, Yuan Shu. Okay, so Yuan Shu was in a war with Cao Cao. So now Liu Biao and Cao Cao against Yuan Shu is what's happening to my west. Tao Ying has also joined the Liu Biao coalition. Okay. We might have to make a move against Tao Ying very soon then. Our food is still negative, but it is winter. Uh, winter uh, has an issue too. Uh, these three, let's look, look at them soon, but first let's take a look at Beihai. So during winter, there is no 25% boost to food production, even in high fertility uh, uh, commanderies. So we were counting on that 25 uh, to make our total to be 50% of uh, two, to make it three. Uh, because we don't have that 25 during winter, it's still negative one. I believe next season it'll turn to zero. Uh, and we don't need to upgrade this, although this is not a bad upgrade. The upkeep doesn't actually increase. So we might upgrade this. Uh, in terms of assignments, Yong is still busy and Dong. We really need another Sentinel. And we didn't get the unity change. I wonder... Okay, we're almost there in terms of this, uh, in terms of getting prestige point to go up. We're only missing five. I wonder if our unity levels are... Uh, what's the threshold for each tier? Because I definitely feel like if this max a thousand, right? Yeah, one thousand max. Then there's th three divide, four, in divide into four. This should be a 250 mark. So we should have got an extra administrator position, but we haven't. Yeah, we haven't. We ha can't put an additional administrator. Uh, we're going to put a tax collection office, like we said. So basically, the inn, the state workshop, are pure income buildings. This is also an income building, as well as the land development. Um, they provide the flat income. Uh, Alright, let's pop that down for zero cost, because we are stingy. Um, we have the assignment here, so we can actually do something here. Uh, what should we build? Uh, we can upgrade the iron mine one more time for a big boost to uh, income, another 100 boost. But the cost is high, the turn is high, so we might hold off on this. I think comparatively, this might be the most worth right now, even though the uh, income only jumps 30. We have a 215% multi multiplier, so we're actually going to get around 90, uh, 94, 95 gold uh, off this. And we're only paying 16, 25 th in three turns, where you do get 135 gold from this, but you're paying a lot more. Double, you're paying double and you're spending double time. So we're going to build this and we're going to recall our guy so we can use him elsewhere. Um, we have a few level up situation, I guess. Oh, actually, he leveled up and he's angry. That makes sense. Uh, he wants a higher court position. Uh, I really want to make him um, administrator. Uh, we can't have him leaving us before then. So we might be forced to give him a little raise. 
It's going to cost us 80 up front as well as 25 more per turn. Not terrible. Uh, where is everyone else at? He is just a senior ward. Uh, this might go down a bit more next turn. I think I'll risk it and not give him this raise. And hope that we'll get there very soon. We only need five more prestige points. Uh, Miheng is also dangerously low because he's not doing anything. That's the issue. Uh, we have him, but he's not actually contributing much uh, to our court. He's already a senior orator. We can definitely fix the lack of purpose. Uh, we can give him a assignment job. But that would risk uh, losing his assignment job. Um, hmm. I believe lack of purpose goes up by two each turn. We're still safe this turn, uh, but after that, I'm not sure. Okay, we we'll keep an eye on it. I feel like it's going to be okay. Um, Taishan, I mean, when we have our food situation all figured out, I will upgrade and continue to build Taishan. Beihai, uh, this building is okay upgrade. Uh, it's not too expensive, upkeep doesn't change, and we do get increased uh, food production, which we apparently need right now, as well as 25% uh, uh, boost to peasantry income from 10. So, yeah, that would be helpful. Alternative, we can upgrade this for one more food and 20 more income. That's not worth it. We've got to do this first, make the percentages high, and then do that. Okay. Um, long yeah, we're ignoring. Uh, Taishan might get assignment. We might, it might assign Jianyong over here, because I don't know if we're building anything here anytime soon. Okay, we have army moving back. We saw an ambush over here. We could counter ambush. Right, we can go out here. And set up an ambush. And hope they fall for it. Let's see. No, he just retreated back. Uh, we also forgot to check the people of merit. So we'll have to take a look at that at the beginning of next turn. Cao Cao has requested Liu Bao to join their war against Rome. Okay, so Cao Cao is kind of inching down south. Uh, Liu Bao up join along with Cai Mao along with uh, Huang, uh, Huang Zhu. Okay. Uh, Guan Yu and Miju is forming a friendship. Oh, that is good. Even though they don't get along with each other, they're forming a friendship. That's that's a good sign. Um, so these can go away. We saw his ambush, discovered it, ran away. Okay, so we had those new people at court that we haven't taken a look. Uh, Pu Feng. Uh, Pu Feng. Pu Feng. Uh, anyways. Um, Young warrior, very standard. Lord of the Beast. He used to work for Yuan Tan. Um, he's gracious, perceptive, charismatic. Uh, that's pretty good, actually. He's a high authority vanguard, which is interesting. I don't think it's super helpful, and like, we don't really need a vanguard at this point. They don't make good. Uh, uh, for assignments either. Uh, Feng, Feng Bi, uh, he's a legendary character because he has a stat over 100. Yes, he does. He has over 100 expertise. 43 is okay. Level 4 is a little high for me to keep him happy, but uh, it's not the end of the world. No special items. Starts with uh, tempered defection. So if you want to know about the skill tree and what they start, just grab your own character. So for example here, just look at Jian Yong, right? Temporary Defection is this skill right here. So he's starting either, definitely with this skill, 
he's, if it's level 1, he'll have one more skill attached to it. Since he's level 4, he could potentially have this route, or this route, or some combination here. But you kind of know what side of the tree he starts on. So if he goes the top route, he's good with archers. Uh, uh, most of the combat skills for purple unit, if you want melee units, starts over here. Range unit over here. Uh, administrator rules are down here. Uh, this side is more for assignments. So we know he can maybe potentially make a good um, administrator. Oh no, this guy right here. Let's see if he has any uh, good skills or traits. He's Tranquil. Okay, that's that's pretty good. Five armor and plus three replenishment. He's trusting, which is okay. Uh, two positive skills. Uh, it's a negative for counter spying, but he's never going to be prime minister, heir, or faction leader. And he's brilliant, so he can actually play a uh, archery role uh, or at least a range role uh, in your army. Uh, this is interesting. He's, he makes a good command. Uh, uh, administrator despite the ambition you know if you can keep him happy that plus 10 income hmm I like him I'm gonna hire him we also need another sentinel because we've been using a lot of sentinel for assignments so let's grab him let's look at uh, Gao Ding uh, Gao Ding is Used to be Domin's. Uh, he's clever, so he levels up fast. He's 22. He's a generic wonder. Uh, Solitarity minus two separation. This army not the greatest. He's honorable. Hmm. He's not terrible either. But we're gonna hold off. Ah, uh, I don't know. He might be good. Let's see. Earthen Rampart. See, Guan Yu is not a good comparison because Guan Yu is uh, one of the legendary characters, like actual actual legendary character. And he gets different skills, right? You have uh, Unstoppable and uh, God of War. So he's, I and mean, we don't have any generic uh, champion units to compare him to. Um, does this drop to 15? This drop to 10? This is dangerously low. Um, I can give him a job. I can give him assignment and basically try to keep him happy. Uh, it's tough. Let's see if we have anything to do in the reform tree. So we picked up shaft mining last turn because we anticipated doing some mining. Uh, corruption is still not a big issue right now. So we have a lot of strategists. So you can keep your strategist happy by taking some of the blue uh, abilities I don't know let me see which one uh, right here so if you have this uh, reform unlock you get plus eight satisfaction for a strategist um, but we don't have that one unlocked I feel like the best one to go for is might be Liu Bo uh, immediately we get more money from the trade influence as well as the upgrade for guest house Mm. Alternative, we can go this route, government enterprises for industry income as well as uh, artisan tool shack. Uh, we don't have any tools, so I don't know that that's not going to immediately help us. Um, where is the salt mine upgrades? Did we already get them? I don't see it. This also opens up one more trade route. This could be good too. This doesn't affect building tree. Uh, one extra trade route is at least 400 income per turn. Um, and uh, uh, additional relationship with someone. Uh, this doesn't lead to anything, neither does this. We really need to build a school just to grab the private tutor to unlock most of this tree. Doesn't seem to be anything that's a great choice. Yeah, uh, debating between these two. 
this might be where our salt mine is. Okay, this is where our salt mine is. So we might just take Liu Bo and eventually head here to Wei Qi. Um, so let's take Liu Bo right now. And keep in mind, we might need a school sometime. Uh, just to unlock a building. Uh, so my solution now, I feel like, has to be temporarily just give them the raids, suck it up, pay the 800 and 25 per turn after that, and keep them satisfied. This is He also leveled up, so he's going to be level 5. Oh dear god. Um, okay. Or he, he was level 3, and he, now he's level 4. Yeah, so he leveled up. Uh, Alright, you guys both will get raises. What can I do, right? And you will get administrator skills because I'm definitely putting you as administrator. 15 reserve, 40% income, 40% income. This help me pay back what I spend on you. Okay, we have an open assignment. Uh, Fungbi has joined us. Actually, I'm going to learn his name so I don't just say Fungbi because Fungbi sounds kind of like a bad word uh, in Chinese. Where are you? Wait. Here you are. Okay, Feng. Feng Bi. Okay, Feng Bi. Uh, that's good. Uh, Feng Bi. Okay. Um, we have a Simon slot open. Uh, Jian Yong is level 3. 45. Yeah, I'm gonna put Mi Heng in for Chen Gong after Chen Gong gets finished. At this point, yeah, he decides. What, what is his current position? Superintendent. He's also low. So I, I'll give him a job so that he's not gonna be uh, mad at me. Uh, who's doing the building again? They had built something already. Ping Yuan. Mm. Taishan. Nope. It's still Dong. We'll just slap him there, waste a turn, it's fine. Just give him something to do. Alright, since he didn't send his army over, I'm gonna actually ask him if he wants to peace out. I know he hates us, but maybe he would want to peace out. He would, yeah. So despite being negative four, um, he recent losses in battle, uh, that factor swings a lot of this over. So he's scared of us because they've been losing a stream of battle to us. This will slowly go down as the losses become uh, more turns and turns away. So take advantage of it once you start crushing him. And we also don't want to be at the point where uh, Yuan Tan is so weak, he will join someone else as a vassal. Because then he automatically peace out with us, and he will just hate us as a vassal of someone else. So we want to maintain that if you know we can finish him fast, we finish him fast. If we can't, uh, let them save a little face so that they can bounce back. Obviously, you know it's going to be war in the future, but uh, at least they're not someone else's vassal and can develop uncontested. You can at least keep an eye on them. So we have a lot of uh, points with him. We could technically make him give us some land right we can make him give us uh well at, so basically at 42 points of difference it's impossible to uh get that cash out and he's already poor so we want to take territory or items whatever they have but here um the option is take territory uh take some farmland this will solve a lot of our farm situation uh alternatively we can See if he's he's definitely not interested in unifying with us. We can ask him for a non-aggression pack. That way, um, it'll be difficult for him to turn on us in the future. Let's see if he has any worthwhile items to give us. He does not. We have one that we're not using. Uh, we can give this to someone to increase their happiness. That's that's the idea. Um, they can also give us food. Hmm, 
They have 10 food. Uh, let's see how much money they have. They're quite poor. There's a lot of points, not useful. So I guess the best thing we can do is get that land. It will solve our food issue. It will starve him farther. He has 10 food right now, but he has two big cities outside of the food. That's all he has. So if we take the farmland away from him, he's going to go into a food deficit and then we can sell him food. So that's the plan. Um, and then the rest we're going to ask for money. Yeah, money. Do we want a non-aggression act? We might, we might take this and then give up on... Do they make big jumps? They don't. Okay. So we'll do this. Wow. That's a lot of more money than I thought. I'm getting close. I'll get there. Oh. I give up. I gotta type this. Um. Okay. Let's do this. We peace out with him. Uh, Liu Bao will be happy. So is Liu Bao friends with Yuan Tan? I guess that's the case. It's not Han Empire. Han Fu will be a little less happy with us, but we already signed all this deal with him. So this will be good. This solves our farm situation. Well, we might lose some money. So we have 2319. He's paying us 281. Uh, we, we'll definitely go up, but I don't know if we... The, the farmland should have an upkeep cost, I believe. Let's go. Alright. No, we got the land. Let's go take a look at our new property. Oh, and we reached uh, second marquis. That's good. And our unity grow. I mean, we had the unity growth. I mean, were we not in here? I don't know. We'll see. Sign peace treaty. Dynasty. Oh, the the rank extra experience for Liu Bei. Okay, so now we have a lot of administrator positions. Oh man, if I'd done this a turn earlier, we could have saved some money. <laughs> uh, money, money, money. Okay, so a little bit leveled up. Wonderful. Uh, we don't need that one. Uh, we wanted to go with this route. No, actually we didn't. We, didn't. We, we were okay with not getting fire error on his units. Uh, redeployment's not an issue right now. We'll take the buff. We kind of came this way just for that plus one rank. Eventually we want to get here. But we don't want this one. Yeah, it's a little conflicting. Okay. Uh, we have a spy spot, uh, spot open. Uh, Mi Heng is happy to be our spy. Uh, that might work. That might be a job we can give him. Instead of administrator role. But first, we have, I believe, two new, uh, one new administrator role, uh, one more from the um, uh, leveling up to second marquee. But I guess the unity breakpoint is not 250. It's it's a weird number. I guess when we get there, we'll see. But we're almost gonna get another administrator spot, so we'll have another one soon. Uh, currently, of the cities we have, administrator for Pingyuan and Taishan is our priority right now. Uh, of these two, I believe Pingyuan will make a better uh, economic uh, city for us. So we're go actually going to be focused on Pingyuan over here. has high fertility, has a salt mine as a building. So salt mine is a purple building, economic building. Uh, that gives a boost to agriculture building. Wait, aren't... I'm pretty sure this should be colored red then. Because military buildings gives government oh what am i talking about blue buildings give agriculture boost that's right blue uh shui yeah so water helps grow wood metal helps grow water yeah so i don't know why salt mine gives agriculture boost that is interesting so potentially pn can actually have all three income source in harmony um that is that's that's good news so we're definitely going to be focused on building pingyuan versus taishan 
Uh, so we're gonna put a minister administrator here. Uh, our plan was to put Chen Gong in here. Uh, Chen Gong is currently still on um, assignment, but he's coming back. Uh, we'll get five more food, 40% uh, income from commerce, 15% from industry, minus nine. Com yeah, so this is perfect. Uh, I believe he's the best man for the job too. Um, he's a, he has even uh, better effects than um, uh, Lu Fan, although Lu Fan has the three public order that he doesn't have. But who needs public order? Uh, Feng Bi will also actually make a great administrator uh, without all the food. Oh, actually, the minus 20% construction cost is just, you know, glaring at me. Okay, so, man, we are unprepared for this change. So we're gonna not put him there. Oh, that's good, he hasn't gone yet. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So, he's not happy because he wants a higher court position by minus 36. But he's only four. So once we stick him in Pingyuan as the administrator, all that goes away. So let's put him in. Perfect. See, all 36 goes away instantly. Uh, so Chen Gong and uh, Mi Heng has to wait. Mi Heng uh, desires something to do. That's that's a quick fix for him. I guess I didn't waste the two promotion on them. We have a one additional spot. Um, Chen Gong is still doing uh, the commerce boosting. Uh, so is corruption even an issue? Uh, we, we're starting to get corruption. Minus 4%. Notice the corruption. It's not a big hit, but it's starting to happen as our territory increase. Uh, Jian Yong can come help do construction in not Taishan in Pingyuan. Yeah, we're really juicing all the discounts. Okay, and Mi Heng will get a job boosting commerce somewhere. Uh, commerce 100. Commerce 180. I think the commerce is still highest in Taishan, but uh, Chen Gong is in there right now, so. Mi Heng can come here. Glad to see you harmonize well with the local administrator, Lu Fan. Uh, Zhang Fei does not harmonize well with him. So we're going to send Zhang Fei actually to Pingyuan. Zhang Fei will be our defensive force uh, with his uh, slightly rudimentary troops. Um, it's difficult to let AI auto move you across river. Uh, they tend to do a poor job of that, so you want to manually Get your guy close and then pop him out uh, like this. Okay, so next turn he'll be there. Perfect. We can go back into March. He's developing a relationship with Guan Yu. That's interesting. Uh, I wonder if this is going to turn into a friendship, like uh, solve their harm disharmony issue, or would it turn into a rivalry? Because that could also be a potential outcome. Uh, Guan Yu, um, so Henei, uh, Henei is a land we just got, it's a level 3 farm, uh, Yuan Shao did a good job upgrading it, it gives us 6 food per turn, it costs us 60 upkeep, but this is the 5 prestige that pushed us over the edge, um, yeah, we also get the resource of grain, I believe, this, that's grain, yeah, we also get grain. Uh, upgrading all the way will give us 10 food, um, not necessary. Um, we're happy with 6 food, you know, we have, we're surplus 11 right now, so that's wonderful, wonderful news. Um, it has a good uh, garrison as well, but the defensible land on our farm is just not great. You have to fight it in the field. Uh, in terms of public order, it's strong with Liu Bei's faction. We don't need to put an army out there to bounce them back. Okay, uh, we will send our armies down. Let's see who is likely to fight us first. Uh, it seems right now Liu Biao is, is probably likely to fight us first. If we click fraction, uh, faction grouping, 
we can see uh, people who that teamed up already. Uh, so far, there's only one coalition that has formed. It's the coalition of the Yellow River. Uh, Liu Biao has his two vassals. Uh, their base is actually right next to the Yangtze River down here. I guess they eked across. And Cao Cao, who I believe has taken Yangzhou and is heading towards Guilin, uh, Guangling, uh, Guangling over here. Uh, Tao Yin is our neighbor. Uh, we're okay with him. We're still at war with Cao Cao. He doesn't want to peace out with us because we're a major threat to him. Okay. Uh, Gong Sun Zan is pretty friendly with us. Very friendly with us. Uh, Yuan Tan doesn't like us, but we just signed a 10 turn agreement. He should be fine. Dong Min. Uh, do we want to peace out with Dong Min? Uh, I don't want to pay him anything to peace out, so nope. Um. You can't negotiate with the Han for peace separately. Uh, Kong Rong. We're in a great spot with Kong Rong. Does he want to form a coalition? He does not. That's a little iffy. Han Fu. We're good with him. He didn't like that we peaced out with Yuan Tan, but you know, no big deal. Oh, he needs food. Although, I don't think I'm in such a surplus where I can start selling them, because I still want to build my cities up. Wang Lao, uh, he... Let's see, Wang Lao... Very neutral against us. He hasn't signed anything with us, and he doesn't want to sign anything with us. Okay. Yeah, we don't need to worry about the Yellow Turban. We have one extra trade agreement because we just ranked up, so let's utilize that. Uh, Gong Sun Zan 559. Okay, uh, we'll continue our friendship with Gong Sun Zan. Who's even happy to uh, pay us money? Okay, per turn wise, it's, it's pretty much a no deal unless I, can, I can't get 500 here, which I think I can. 3.2 should not be a problem. Yep, 545. Um, cause this one seems like, yeah, not gonna, not gonna match. So let's deepen our relationship with Gong Sun Zan. Okay. Uh, non-aggression pack. Honestly, I would like to have one with him because I am worried that Cao Cao would. Mm, I don't know. That's a lot. Might be a war coming. We'll see. Uh, also, one last thing, uh, Tao Ying, right? We have a mission to take uh, Donghai, which is his capital. Uh, I don't. We can't really go to war with him because he is part of a coalition. Uh, I can't ask him for unification, but he is not in the mood for that. Uh, so, I don't know about this. This is iffy. I think I have to move my army back. Uh, Guan Yu is done up north. We have solid friendships with uh, Gong Sun Zan and a pretty good one with Han Fu. Uh, if Yuan Tan wants to fight, Zhang Fei will have to deal with him. Uh, pop into the river. We'll switch you back to the to Dong. Okay, everyone's in transit. Um, how much assignment do we have? We have utilized all our assignments. We're gonna have to hire some new people soon. Oh. One last thing, we also have this spot open for Chancellor. Now, Chancellor's um, gives uh, its character uh, independent. It doesn't matter who you make Chancellor, the effect is the same. They give you 15% income from peasantry faction wide. That character will no longer desire higher offers until they're level 8. And the problem is, uh, they also become part of your uh, council. And they give you periodic missions every year they give you a mission and you can uh, gain farther satisfaction other boosts by completing them the downside is the salary requirement is plus 250 uh, so it's expensive the mission is not very good 
and from my base peasantry income, the 15% is not going to make the 250 back. So I will only use this position, give someone this job when they're high enough level and that they you know, are unhappy with me and I, I don't want to give them individual raises. I just want to slap a big title on them. This is what I'm going to do when that happens. So we're going to end our turn. Domain wants peace, but still wants us to pay him. Uh, we ha we can't afford it for sure. Uh, but I don't see the need to peace out with him, especially if I uh, want to take over more Han territory. So, nope. Uh, friend into foe. I'm not sad because now we can actually try to take Donghai. Alright, Cao Cao has requested Tao to join war with uh, Zhu Rong. Okay. Liu Ba has commanded Vassal to join war with Yuan Shu. Ah, uh, okay. So Huang Zhu has asked Liu Bao to join war against us. So we are at war with Liu Bao and Tao Ying. And probably the whole coalition, because Cao Cao is in that there. Yep. Feng Bi and Xu Yu has a good relationship. That's that's cool. Xu Yu is right here. Maybe we can recruit him into the army. You know, he can be the infantryman of this army. We have cavalry and strategists. Feng Bi is also administrator, so we could hire him. Uh, oh, he's not good relationship with Zhang Fei though. Yeah, I was thinking of hiring Jian Yong. Uh, even though he doesn't make a good fighter, we can uh, build out his retinue and then slap him back as administrator. Uh, Gao Ding, uh, we have some issues with him. I believe he was unfaithful or something. Uh, disloyal. Uh, unfaithful. <laughs> okay, uh, we're at war with Liu Biao, uh, as well as uh, Tao Ying. Okay. So we'll first go back to Dong. Uh, so let's close out the ones we've seen. Chen Gong has finished his assignment, has recalled. So we're definitely over the. Yeah, okay, we're finally over it. 264. We went up by 8 last turn. So maybe this is 260. I don't know. This doesn't look like 260, but now we finally have the extra administrator slot. So we're gonna give it to Chen Gong when he comes back because he's unhappy with us in terms of position. And uh, yeah. Uh, Mi Hong can also spy for us. Uh, we talked about that. Um, but right now, we're gonna have to have him on assignment. So we're happy to fight him. He, where's his force? He, he, he must have an army. Uh, Liu Biao must have an army too. Uh, Dong is pretty defensible with uh, Lu Fan. Okay, so Ping Yuan has built the tax office, has the level 1 salt mine, has the assignment in place. Everything's good to go here. So this is a economic building, so it gets the boost from the tax collection office to level up. So I think this is 40% discount on a salt pond, which is great for 100. Yeah, this is great. Although getting another slot would be great too. Five turn assignment. Utilize three of it first. Yeah, let's do that. These I don't need to build. Yeah, they're not as good leveling up yet. So let's upgrade the salt pond. This will also make the defenders better. Uh, Dong no longer has a uh, uh, construction. So maybe let's first take a second look at the ones we have. Ah, we still haven't found Liu Bei a wife. 
36, not that bad. We have a lady here with a follower. So she's, that's a little extra, you know. Um, inspiring Surge, okay, that's the bad one. That's one we don't want, but she's honest. She's impeccable. Wow, and tranquil. I think we found ourselves a wife. Although she's capable of being a spy. And he, she's a manipulator, so she disregards honor and trustworthiness. Oh. That's a little worrisome. She could be a spy for Wang now. She's been there two years. All her stats are pretty passive, so it doesn't feel like she... Okay, so one way to check real quick is if Wang Liang is actually... He's not a second marquee yet. Yeah, see, Tao Ying is a second marquee, so he's, he's capable of spying. He's just a noble, he's not capable of spying. Okay, so she's safe. She's safe. So I think we found ourselves a wife. I think we found ourselves a wife. Although she doesn't like trustworthiness and honor, and I'm pretty sure Liu Bei has honor. Oh, he, she doesn't. He doesn't have honor. Oh, but he commands honor, opposes cruelty. Okay. Humble, commands honor. Might not be the perfect wife, but I think she's at least a good character to have. Yeah, we're gonna take her. Uh, Li uh, Xian, Li Xian, twenty-three, Liu Bao's uh, force. This may trigger random superstition event for their own faction. It's 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 kind of fun. Uh, I might want to do that. He's greedy though, so uh, we're done here. Huang Yu also has an item. Twenty-two, capable of spying. Uh, Wisdom of the River is a pretty decent one. He's graceful. He's tolerant. I don't like the corruption, but it's not going to come to effect. He's kind hearted. Oh, I like this guy too. Zheng Jiang. Zheng Jiang. Uh, I don't know. I can't. I don't have contact with Zheng Jiang. I don't think she was just spy on him. But he's level 4. Uh, she, I can try to keep his wife. Maybe I can take him and put him out as a spy. As a rogue. She's a better spy. Okay, let's hold off on this. We'll check if Liu Bei can marry her. If he can. Ah, uh, she's single. Okay, there's no check mark. They don't harmonize, but they also don't disharmonize. So I guess we'll just marry her. Uh, just gotta do a background check, you know. Xi Yue Zhen. Xi Yue Zhen. Okay, let's get married. We need babies. Because alternatively, we could have made her a spy and make her marry into another faction. But. Alright, we're married. Um. Yeah, we're, we're good here. Yeah, marriage. Uh, let's call this an end. This is a pretty happy ending. Uh, we're married. Uh, we are now second marquee. We peaced out with uh, Yuan Tan, but has been declared war by the coalition of the Yellow River, uh, led by Liu Biao, Cao Cao, Tao Ying, um, and Liu Biao's two vassal. Uh, we have consolidated a foothold at the mouth of the Yellow River region. 
We're great friends with Kong Rong and Gong Sun Zan, but as you can see, how quickly friendships turn. Uh, we're not entirely sad about fighting Tao Ying because we had the chance to uh, take his capital, which is part of our mission. Uh, so we're going to turn our forces down south once we're sure Liu Bao will not invade us from this way. Um, that's the game plan for next time. Uh, once again, thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoy the content. If you did so, please remember to like, subscribe, and comment below to support the channel. Uh, hope you guys have a nice day and see you next time. Bye!